we presented our work that we have been working on for like probably the last two years. Um, so what we um, did is that we are very much interested in finding biomarkers to prognose to, or to look at the prognosis of um, MS patients that start out with a relapsing course but then at some point they convert to secondary progressive disease. Because we know that not all patients do eventually convert to progressive disease and we really would like to have biomarkers that guide our treatment decisions early on. So um, when we looked into the literature about the evidence which biomarkers would be promising, the most promising is certainly the spinal cord atrophy. And that corresponds very well um, with the clinical notion that patients who have a progressive disease have a predominant myelopathy. So we have at UCSF a very long-term observational um, cohort study that has been studied now for almost 15 years. So we were basically able to go back in time knowing the outcome of the patients today and see how they were differentiating in terms of MRI markers um, at the baseline, which is you, we, we had a median disease duration of 10 years at baseline. So we looked very comprehensively at all metrics of MRI that have been suggested um, in the literature to be possible biomarkers of disease outcome and correlations, um, we had good correlations with clinical disability. Um, and we were able to look at spinal cord atrophy because we developed a novel method that allowed us to extract spinal cord areas from brain images, which nobody had really succeeded on a prospectively collected longitudinal cohort before. So that was the main strength of our study. And what we found was that patients who went on to convert to secondary progressive disease during our study period, these patients had much higher rates of spinal cord atrophy than those patients who remained stable during the entire observation period until today, which is two decades of disease since disease onset. And this was really surprising for us that the rates were so different between the two groups. And it was a really clear cut and um, statistically, for those who are a little bit firm in statistics, the confidence intervals of the slopes of the two um, patient groups were actually not overlapping at all, which gave us a really high, highly significant p-value. So that was very interesting to see, which tells us that patients who convert to secondary progressive disease, they actually um, differentiate already during the relapsing phase from those who remain a more benign disease subtype and remain relapsing for more than two decades. And that is certainly the most promising biomarker that um, we currently found in our study. We also looked at brain metrics, as I said, we did a very comprehensive study and tried to include um, brain lesion loads um, from T1 and T2 weighted images. We also looked at slowly enlarging lesions, which have just in the recent years um, become a focus of the, um, research because they have been shown to um, represent probably chronic inflammation that is not targeted by treatments. So we wanted to know whether these lesions are also more prominent in patients who convert to progressive disease, but we did not find any difference. We looked at all commonly used brain atrophy metrics, and that's that means global brain atrophy and also regional brain atrophy, so atrophy of the white matter, the gray matter, deep gray matter structures, including thalamus, cutamen and caudate, and we also did not find significant differences between the two patient groups, and it was really the spinal cord atrophy that stood out from all these markers to be prognostic of the conversion of um, patients um, to secondary progressive disease.